Hey guys, it's Jake from Metalwani and we have a very special guest with us today, hot off the back of selling out many shows of their recent US tour and gearing up for an upcoming run in Europe, we have the one and only Paolo Gregoletto, bass player for Trivium. Paolo, how are you going today? Going really well, uh, getting ready for our next trip to Europe and just super excited for it. Yeah, cool. And that's actually a good tie-in for my first question. So you are heading out on the uh, on this trip to Europe in the next couple of days, and it's um, six-week tour, I believe, that runs covers a lot of the uh, covers a lot of Europe. Um, but it seems like only yesterday that the band was over there for the run of festival shows last year. So I guess I want to start off by asking, how much does the band enjoy touring Europe? Uh, I mean, we've been going there since Ascendancy, and it's grown so much since then, and we've, we've gained so many new fans since then that, like, every time we go over, it's gotten better and better. So, you know, we have a very positive view of going to Europe and the UK. Um, you know, it's been kind of like a real stronghold for us and, and something that we've built over the years. I feel like the, the U.S. is sort of like, we had like an early like kind of peak in the beginning. We've kind of come back to that again on this last album so far. And, you know, UK, Europe's just been this like slow, steady build for us. Yeah, yeah. And that definitely seems to be the way that it's come across. So um, I guess... <laughs> I guess uh, I want to sort of look into and ask, um, what sort of reception are you expecting from these shows, given that you've had such a really great reception for the US uh, tour, with a lot of them being sold out, and keeping in mind that you mentioned, mm -hmm. as you said, that it's sort of a bit of a stronghold for you over in Europe? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think before, it's like, of course, we've always like had a good time going over, but we feel so much stronger about our live show now than ever before, especially with Alex uh, behind the kit, that I think, um, kind of like the U.S. tour, we had like really high hopes for it, and it exceeded our expectations. So we're hoping that the expectations we have for the U.K. Europe, which are normally just really good, are very much exceeded. We really wanted to make sure this set was special, was you know, obviously focusing a lot on the new stuff, but also, like, diving into the catalog and picking out songs that weren't ones we played in a while, uh, some different ones, something, some things that are unexpected, some things that are, you know, songs we haven't done in a while that are our bigger songs, so we wanted to make sure people were, you know, when we post up the first set list, that people are like, whoa, they're, you know, they're really, like, doing some different stuff here, and... We have a couple songs we're going to rotate throughout the tour, so it's, it's fun for us, and hopefully for the fans, they'll come out and think it's one of the, the better shows we've done there. Yeah, cool. So you're heading out on this tour with Code Orange, Power Trip, and Venom Prism, which, I mean, from my perspective, it seems like sort of a complete lineup in terms of the genre depth that each band has going on, so... Mm -hmm. Is there any other bands that you would love to include on there? I guess just as sort of like a wish list type thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're always talking about bands that we want to tour with. I mean, the U.S. tour was sort of that as well. It was like the same mindset of obviously getting us and our enemy together was, for us, it was definitely like a no-brainer because we toured with them. We fit very well. But when it came to the opening bands, it was like, let's get some exciting new bands on here. Like, who's who's kind of making some waves on their own? Who's pushing the genre on their own? And, you know, we looked for a lot of different bands. And While She Sleeps and Fit for Not Topsy were really high on the list. And when they became available, you know, we definitely jumped to the opportunity. It was sort of the same for the UK and Europe. It was like, let's get Code Orange, let's get Power Trip, get Ben in Prison. You know, we threw out a couple other names, and it was like, those bands were like, again, at the top of the list. It was like, who is doing something right now? Who's a new band that's exciting, that's getting people stoked? And that's kind of what we're looking for. And it's sort of like, I mean, I don't really know what other bands are thinking, but for us, it's like, you know, how can we champion new bands that are doing something that bring excitement to the genre? You know, maybe show our fans some other new stuff, because... That's such a difficult thing. It's like 
I, I get frustrated because I find so many new bands and it seems like good music gets like just ignored completely for a lot for things that are just boring and it's like if we can just help push something out that's good and get some attention to it I mean it benefits us because we're bringing exciting bands on the tour I think it rounds out the bill and everyone is happy but it's also like for the scene it's like it we need new bands. We need new stuff coming up because, I don't know, there's just so much good stuff that I feel like is just getting overlooked. And it's it's kind of like we're almost at a point where, like, there's so much good stuff out there that, it like, people just can't keep up with it. So for bands like us, we just kind of have to use our platform to get them out there and kind of hold them up and be like, hey, check this out. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And just on um, touring with other bands, when you guys return from Europe, you're also doing another US tour run with Bullet For My Valentine. Now, I know that that has been an often requested pairing um, of bands and it's taken a long time, but you've finally been able to make it work out. Is that something yeah. that you think might come together in future for other locations around the world? So say a, a future Europe, Europe tour or an Asia Pacific mm-hmm. tour? Yeah, I mean, we've always been down for that, and it's really just come down to, like, the scheduling or just wasn't the right timing, but, I mean, we're friends and fans of them, so it kind of just comes down to that. If, if the timing is right, like, if they're like, hey, we're thinking about going out here, would you guys be interested in doing something, you know? If we're available and if it, it seems like it's something that's in the, the plans that we had in mind, we would love to. I mean, I think it's a definitely a huge crossover between our bands with the fan bases and, you know, people have been asking for it so long that it's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, we're always the band that's open to, like, making tours happen. Like, there's no, there's definitely no ego when it comes to, like, making it happen. If we, if it's, hey, we, we're going to be in this slot and this is what it is to make this tour happen, like, yeah, we're down. We want to make it the biggest, best tour we can. We've had the privilege of doing tours like that in the past. Like the Black Crusade tour was such an amazing success because every band just made it happen. And it's like, if you make an event, people will come out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's actually interesting that you mentioned the Black Crusade tour because that was... It wasn't my first time seeing you guys, but it was one of the first shows that um, I had seen you guys in Australia. And just that lineup, the uh, Arch Enemy, um, Machine Head, and yourselves on that one night was amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that was a, a. Australia, UK, Europe, it was phenomenal. Like, probably still, like, you know, one of the highlight tours of a career that had a lot of highlights in it so i mean we're we're very stoked that we were going to make that happen and we're always like hey how can we make a tour like this happen again with different bands and try it out see what happens and that's what it's all about you know giving fans what they want yeah definitely um so you guys uh, a little bit over a week ago put out the film clip for betrayal which has been compiled from live footage during the most recent tour Film clips have generally been something that Trivium are generally a bit more... uh, um, I use the word reserved, but it's not something that you guys go overly out of your way to um, do, normally one or two an album. Are there more songs that you'd like to do for the Sit in the Sentence cycle in film clip form? Oh, in like the live... like a live video? Oh, live video, a made-up film clip, anything... Well, um, funny you say that, uh, I don't know when it's being announced, but we're, we have a video for Beyond Oblivion that's going to be out, I think, in a few days, so we'll start teasing that very soon. I think there'll be something up, um, starting that. Um, we also have more of those live things we did at that rehearsal place, so I don't really know the exact plan of what we're doing with all of them. I think we're going to do a Heart From Your Hate one, um, eventually. And we have another music video that I think Matt already sort of let that out of the bag with the, the stream thing, but for Endless Night, which is going to be a feature track that goes towards American 
rock radio. And then Beyond Oblivion is like the single for the European UK tour. Yeah. And that's why we did a video for that, which I'm very excited about because we're playing that one. It's very fun. Uh, we're playing Sever the Hand, which is another real fun one from the record. We're probably going to try to cycle through the entire album if we can and at least play every song once before we end it, which is something we really haven't done probably since Ascendancy, maybe. I mean, even back then, that was kind of tough because we were supporting. We never could play, like, a full hour, hour and a half at that point. Yeah. So it's been fun, and people seem to be like, hey, play more new stuff, play more new stuff. We want to hear this song and that song. And, I mean, you cannot ask for something, like, a better feeling than when you've made a record and people are really, like, excited by it. Yeah, and look, that's actually a good lead into my next question because Sin in the Sentence has been out for almost six months now. It's received fairly positive reception across the board due to not only the depth of songwriting but the overall sound. And So I guess I want to ask, when you were making this album and also to a degree Silence in the Snow, were you guys worried about the divergence in sound from what the, band, uh, what the fans have come to expect from Trivium? Um, not really as much on the new record, because the new record, I feel like, was sort of, kind of felt like we were getting back on our feet and figuring out, like, hey, you know, the last two records before this record, we sort of, like, were in the passenger seat when it came to, like, the creation of the record, and not in terms of the writing, but, like, just kind of the way we went about it, with the recording and everything, with two producers that I felt were very dominant in the production seat. And it was sort of like, okay, let's shift back to where we were at before this, but let's not shift back to just like trying to be a nostalgia act and live in our glory days of the earlier record. Let's keep pushing this forward and just do what we do best, which is go into a rehearsal room, all share each other's riffs and ideas and mold it into something that is exciting to us sounds, you know, weird, but it's just like, you know, we have to be excited by it. It's like, I think if you're in the rehearsal room and something is not happening, it is not going to happen on the record. It's not going to be good live. Yeah. It's never going to be a better version of it. It's like, if a riff is like, if you look at everyone when you're playing a riff and everyone's like smiling and having fun, like that's something. And that is something that was just like, we had to kind of get back to that. We had to like wall ourselves off from everyone else. Um, we didn't bring Josh in, who, you know, produced the record. We didn't bring him in until we pretty much had, like, a good amount of stuff already going and sort of, like, the idea of, like, what we want the record to be. And, you know, it's sort of like we, we've tried a couple different production uh, routes for how to write a record, how to do a record, and it's like, we know what we're doing, let's stick to that, you know. And I think it was good. I, I feel like they were learning experiences, but, like, it felt good to just be back into, like, this really good groove. And then having Alex was, like, this, you know, awakening for us, like, something we never have had before. Like, a drummer on this level, writing sessions going this smoothly. It was just, like, everything we had before and then more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a good it's a, a sort of an interesting insight into it. Now, I mean, I'd be crazy not to ask because it seems like it's been forever since there's been any sort of beef or feud in the metal community. But a little bit over a week ago, there was a bit of a Twitter exchange between yourself, yeah. and all that remains frontman Phil Labonte. Uh, we're not going to dive into it here. You've obviously had your chance to talk to Phil. Um, through Twitter and all of that, but why do you think he took such an interest in your comments on his recent InfoWars segment? I mean, probably because I'm in a band that is prominent and a lot of other band guys don't really say much, and uh, I generally don't dive into stuff like that, but and I really don't care about the content of any of that interview or what it was said. It's irrelevant. But it's like, I don't know. It, it's sort of like, uh, not like saying any more than I've already said. Just sort of like, 
something I felt that needed to be said and said by someone in a band because I think it's usually just, you know, maybe fans saying something back and it's kind of easy to bat that stuff down. But, you know, this, for us, this genre is like, it's all about bringing up new bands, bringing up good stuff. And I feel like that sort of shit really overshadows what matters, which is good music, good players, good vocalists, people that deserve a chance to be heard, and we're about empowering that. And the attention-grabbing stuff takes away from all of that. And when you don't do your actual job good, and you're using it as an attention-seeking thing, like, I don't know, I think it's fucking stupid. And... If that's what you want to get out of this, fine. But it's like, I want to drag it back to, like, new bands. I want to drag it back to better bands, to bands that never get any attention because it's always sucked into the bullshit of people like that. And it's not about the, you know, like, I don't know, the bands that we're bringing out. I want people to know those bands because they give a shit, you know? They're busting their ass. And they deserve the attention, not the... You know, people that don't give a shit, don't put any effort into their craft or music, have given up on it or given up on the genre, but want to use it when it's convenient to them. Like, that was really all it was about. It was sort of me just being like, don't really care. You know, I think I'm going to break the, the, the seal here, which is stepping back down from the fray or into the fray, kind of like, you know, it's uh don't like to be a drama uh, attention seeker, but, you know, if that's what it's going to take to maybe force people to kind of think about other things, like I said, new bands, bands that try hard, then it is what it is, you know. But at the end of the day, it's like what matters is, you know, our, our music, our touring, focusing on that. That's why I didn't go anywhere else past those two days and yeah. it is what it is you know everyone has their views on how that was or what it achieved but you know it is what it is and it's nice to just be able to say what you think you know and not always pretend that everything is great and you know stay silent when you don't really need to be or want to be yeah yeah definitely now Paolo I've got one more for you I know we're running out of time here but Trivium has been nominated for and has won a few accolades over the duration of the band's career but you guys are yet to be nominated for a Grammy I know that's not the sort of thing that bands set out to um, achieve when they're starting out saying hey we want to win a Grammy but what would a nomination like a very large nomination of that degree mean for the band um I think this record actually didn't make the cutoff, so it's very possible that we could have something like that. I mean, I don't know. I, I think it would be very, it'd be a great honor, and I don't know what the award means in terms of, like, does it sell records? Does it make you more known uh, in the music industry? I don't know. I mean, it definitely gives you some legitimacy in, in terms of, like, the industry, and... I don't know. Being recognized for anything is incredible. I mean, I I know I, I felt myself kind of go back and forth on those kind of things. Even I think about like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and sometimes it feels like very like, what's the point? You know, who cares? If your fans love you, that's all that matters. But I don't know. It's nice. It's nice to be recognized, especially if you've been doing it for a while and your peers or fans recognize you and that's a nice feeling. Um just the, the positivity towards us with the new record and the tour selling out, I mean, that has been a great feeling. And, I mean, it's hard to deny, like, if we got nominated for any sort of award, like, yeah, we'd feel great. And it just, it doesn't mean that, like, it's all done, like, you've achieved everything and you need to pack up and go or you don't have to keep trying hard. If anything, it means, hey, you need to keep fucking pushing yourself. You need to push the boundaries. Like, you, you've got this one thing that doesn't mean you're you're done. You know, your, your work's still, uh, you've got a lot of work still ahead of you. And that's how we've kind of always felt with our band. It's like, 
there's never going to be an album or tour or point where we're like, okay, this is the mountaintop and we're going to just sit here. It's like, you got to keep moving. You got to keep trying. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Paolo, thank you so much for your time today. Um, uh, good luck on the upcoming Europe tour and the rest of the tours throughout the year. Thank you. I appreciate it.